all right hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel okay so in this video we're going to continue our study on partial fractions and you recall that we talked about partial fractions and the types that are available and so we looked at type one previously in our other videos and so today we're going to continue with type two and these are partial fractions with the oh sorry fractions with denominators that uh, have repeated roots so how do you you know split them into their partial fractions so here we have example and the first example here says that we should express the following in two partial fractions so we're going to look at example one and two and i'm going to leave example three for you as an exercise okay so quickly let's begin with example one so here we have 2x squared plus x 7x all over this x plus 3 all squared okay so now whenever you have repeated roots now you are going to break down your fraction in this form remember that what you still have here you know as a denominator also linear roots so they are linear factors so just that one of them in this case is repeated you have squared here so in this case here just one linear factor is repeated three times that's cube and here you have one linear factor and then another repeated three times also so what are we going to have remember i said in the first video that the number of linear factors you have as the denominator will give you the number of partial fractions you should expect so that means this is going to give us a all over x minus 2 plus now in this case we're going to have 3 here you have 1 and then there are 2 here so the next one is going to be b all over x plus 3 so now what's going to make up the third partial fraction it's going to be c now all over the denominator in this case is now going to be the square of this so which is x plus 3 squared so that is to say for here now you are going to have you know a all over x plus 2 plus b all over x plus 2 squared plus c all over x plus 2 cubed okay although we are going to get there so now recall what i said here so to get your identical polynomial all you are going to have is that your numerator here which is x squared 2x squared sorry plus 7x minus 2 is going to be equivalent to so in this case remember the denom the lcm here is just going to be all of this so that's going to be a multiplying of course this denominator here will cancel this and so you have only this which is x plus 3 all squared then plus b now this x plus 3 will cancel remove one here so you have x minus 2 <clears throat> and then x plus 3 then plus c the denominator here will cancel and you have only x minus 2 left okay and that's uh, your equivalent your equivalent fraction oh, sorry the equivalent polynomial and so now you recall our approach so to find the value of a b and c now we are going to have um to to find our a we need to eliminate b and c and to eliminate b and c we look for common um uh, linear factor which is this and this okay and so in that case we are going to let our x be equal to positive 2 and if that happens we put x as positive 2 here we have 4 plus 4 times 2 so let me put it this way 2 times 4 plus 7 times 2 minus 2 is equal to if we put x as 2 here we'll have 5 and 5 squared is 25 so that will give us 25a and whereas if you put x as 2 here you have 0 0 so that means that this is going to give us 8 plus 14 which is 22 minus 2 which is 20 so we'll have 20 is equal to 25a and so that means our a alone is equal to 20 all over 25 
which is equal to 4 all over 5. All right, so that gives us um, the two, uh, sorry, the value for A. So we need to now look for the value for our B. And to get our B, what do we do? We will simply, okay, from here, we are also going to now, at this, from this point, we are going to eliminate our A and C. And now you can see there is no common linear factor here to help us eliminate A and C. So let's jump B for now. Let's go to C. Can we get the value for C? Yes, we can eliminate A and B. And to eliminate A and B here, we have two common factors, which is X plus 3. And so we can let our X here be equal to minus 3. And so if our X is minus 3, what are we going to have here? That's going to give us 2 times minus 3 raised to the power 2 is 9, plus uh, 7 times minus 3, then minus 2 is equal to, this is going to be 0, this is going to be 0, and then you are going to have uh, C into bracket minus 5, because minus 3 here, minus 2 will be minus 5. So that means here then, that here we have 18, um, 18 minus 21, which is minus 3, then minus 2, and that's going to give us minus 5 is equal to minus 5c. Therefore, our c is actually equal to 1. <clears throat> okay, so we need to now solve for the value of, um, <clears throat> of b. And recall what I said, for us to get the value of b, in this case, uh, we can't eliminate A and C. So you remember what I said in that case, you should let your X be equal to zero. And when you make your X zero, then you can find uh, an equation that will contain A, B, and C. And since you already have the value of A and C, you can then substitute and then look for the value of what? Of B. So if we put X as zero here and here we'll have zero, and so we we'll have only minus 2 left, and that's equal to, if we put x as 0 here, you have 3 raised to power 2, which is 9, and that will give us 9a. If we put x as 0 here, you will have minus 2 uh, times 3, which is minus 6, so we we'll have minus 6b. And if you put x as 0 here, that will give us uh, minus 2c. Alright, and so... Since we already have values for our A, which is, um, our A is 4 over 5. So we have 4 over 5 here, minus our B is what we are looking for, and our C is 1. Okay, so here now we are going to have um, minus 2 is equal to, this is uh, 36 all over 5. Uh, minus 6b then minus 2 okay so at this point we can choose to um, take uh, of course here we have minus 2 on this side we have minus 2 so both of them can take themselves away so we just have 0 left here and then if that is the case so we can take minus 6b to this side and it will be positive 6b to be equal to 36 all over 5. And so if we divide both sides by 6, we are going to have that B alone is equal to 36 all over 5. Now there is another 6 that is coming since we are dividing both sides by 6. So this is going to give us 1 and this is 6. So you are going to have 6 all over 5 as the value for our B. Okay, so now we have the value for A, B and c and so if we substitute that into this uh, formula here that is going to give us the value of the or the partial fractions we are looking for and that's simply equal to our a is 4 over 5 so remember i said you just leave the numerator of the fraction up and bring the denominator down so when that denominator multiplies this you will have 5 into x minus 2 and then plus b, our b is, we have gotten it at 6 over 5. So that's going to give us 6 all over 5 into x plus 3. 
and then our c we got it as one and that is one all over x plus three all squared and this is the required uh, partial fractions for example one okay so that's how to handle partial fractions for repeated roots if the roots are uh, linear factors okay so let's look at example two example two says here plus two or a super three and so what did i say here because the linear factors here are up to three because you can actually write this as 3x squared plus 5 all over x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. So you have three linear factors, but they are the same. So they are repeated. Okay. So in putting them in your, you know, in your um, partial fraction form, that means you are going to have a all over the first one, x plus 2 plus b if you you can write x plus 2 again and so what you do is then you take the two of it which is x plus 2 all squared and then c all over you can't also repeat x plus 2 squared so you are going to take the whole three so which is x plus 2 raised to power 3 sorry okay so and now you are going to simplify this so to get our equivalent fraction sorry equivalent polynomial what do we do uh, so remember always begin with your numerator here which is x plus 2 x 3x squared sorry plus 5 is equivalent to i'll pick a then take the you know the lcm here is going to be x plus 2 cube and so if x plus 2 divides x plus 2 cube you are going to have x plus 2 squared and then plus b times x plus 2 squared divides this you're going to have just x plus 2 and then you have c uh, plus c if this divides this you're just going to have one so that's just c there okay so quickly let's try to solve now and so to solve this what are we going to do you can clearly see that a and b have the same factor x plus 2 x plus 2 so we can quickly delete the 2 and find the value of c and so to do that we were going to let our x be minus 2 and if our x is minus 2 here we are going to have 3 times 4 because minus 2 squared is 4 plus 5 is now equal to this is 0 this is 0 just c so that means our c alone is equal to 12 plus 5 which is 17 okay so haven't gotten the value of c next thing is to get for b and uh, a and to get the value for our b and a all we need to do now is since we can't do a direct substitution for x to eliminate any of these two so we let our x to be zero so if we let our x to be zero we are going to have here five and that's equal to here four that's a uh, two squared and that will give us four a and then here you will be left with two and two times b is two b and then you will have c but recall that our c is 17 and so that's going to give us four a plus two b plus 17 if you take this to this side that will give us minus 12 and so we'll have that minus 12 is equal to 4a plus 2b and if we divide through by by 2 so it means that we have uh, if we divide here by 2 you get 2a and if you divide here by 2 you get b is equal to minus 6 okay so we can keep this equation and then now we have two variables that's a and b so how do we solve for this so we're going to now apply the first method which is to expand this particular expression and then compare both sides so let's quickly do that so if we do that we're going to have 3x squared plus 5 expanding the other side we're going to get a into the bracket of x squared plus 4x plus 4 that's if we expand this and then this will give us plus bx plus 2b 
and then uh, plus C okay so what happens here if you open this bracket now you will get 3x squared plus 5 is equivalent so this will give us a x squared plus 4 a x and then plus 4 a plus b x um, and this is plus uh, 2b plus c now from here you can quickly see that we can compare both sides here yeah? and if we compare both sides so if we compare coefficients of both sides what are we going to have simply you can see that the coefficient of x squared on the right hand side is a and on the left hand side is 3 so that simply means that our a is equal to 3 and so we have gotten the value of a and if you substitute that into this equation that will quickly give us the value of b okay so that's going to mean if you put a here you're going to have 2 times 3 then plus b is equal to minus c so this is minus 6 if you take it over to the other side therefore our b is equal to minus 6 minus 6 which is what minus 12 so the other way you can do this is to also combine your this the terms containing x if you do that you would get the coefficient of x as 4a plus b and if you compare that coefficient to the left hand side you get that 4a plus b is equal to 0 and if you solve that simultaneously with this equation you will get your values of a and b to be 3 and minus 12 okay and so having gotten these two other values added with your c so if you substitute into this um, uh, splitted partial fraction that will give you the solution and so our solution is simply equal to our a is 3 all over x plus 2 minus 12 which is our b all over x plus 2 all squared plus 17 which is our c all over x plus 2 all raised to power 3 okay and so and that's the solution to this uh, problem and this is how to handle you know partial fractions with repeated roots with repeated roots okay so and i'm going to allow you to take example three as an exercise kindly do that and you can see here there are four linear factors these and three here repeated okay so you're expected to have four partial fractions and in fact what i would want you to do is uh, find the constant meaning we are going to have four constants here a b c and d and let me see your solution in the comment section below that's where we'll end it for this video we'll see you in our next video kindly subscribe to our youtube channel like share and comment on our videos and thank you for watching bye